Hi, I'm Bruce Arnold, and I'd like to talk to you about my new course, Scale Analysis. Um, this is one of the most important courses I've ever created. It took me many, many months to put together. It's a 700-page PDF and over four hours of video. Um, lots of MP3s and MIDI files to go with it. Uh, but basically what we have here is a concept of how to think about scales and chords. And what I do is I use three different chord progressions to show you how to put chords and scales together and think of them all in one key center. Um, what we use is 12 keys of a major blues, 12 keys of a minor blues, and then 12 keys of rhythm changes. Rhythm changes is a jazz type of tune, but a lot of the changes found in that tune are found in many different types of progressions from pop music to really any type of music. So it's a good uh, chord progression to look at. Um, so this is a pretty groundbreaking course here. Um, I would say as far as thinking of ear training, um, the one note ear training, the contextual ear training singing course, and this are really what you should start with. Um, even if you can't hear um, all 12 notes in a key center yet, just working through this and starting to think of all notes in one key center and all scales in one key center is good just you know in your mind to start thinking of that. Unfortunately, uh, many courses and many schools teach you that you know every chord that you see is a different key center, or at least think of it that way. You know, if you had I don't know C7 going to F7, when you go to F7, think of F as one, A is three, C is five, and E flat as as flat seven. In reality, you, you're probably hearing that as uh, the F is 4, the A is 6, the uh, C is the root, and the uh, E flat as the flat third if you're in the key of C. So that's what we're really doing with all these chord progressions is going through, figuring out what the scales would be, thinking of all those scales in one key. And that really changes a lot of these scales that go with these chords. You're going to find that we're going to start using scales that you've never seen before, or at least you thought you never s saw before. Sometimes um, there might be some wacky name to one of these scales that I've given, uh, but uh, it really turns out to be something pretty simple. And that's another thing that happens in this course, is I go through and I really, really analyze all the scales in the course so that you can understand how they're related to other scales that you might know. So really there only ends up being 28 different scales in this whole course, but there's many, many modes. And uh, you know, I go through quite a bit of uh, explaining and different uh, diagrams and things like that to show you how all these different scales are related, which we'll look at some of that stuff here in a minute. But basically, um, some people have been asking me, okay, well, how does this course relate to the hearing chord progressions? And I would say, well, hearing chord progressions is more like the dictionary of, of how to hear chord progressions and scales. Um, this is more looking at a real musical example of taking a, a major blues, a minor blues, and rhythm changes, and really seeing, okay, well, what kind of scales work with those type of chord progressions, because there's a very common types of chord progressions and very common chord movement that you would find in most tunes. Um, and it's really fascinating. I just really enjoyed doing this course. It took forever because, it, like I said, it's a 700-page PDF and over four hours of video, so it took quite a while to do, but um, it was really cool to just see how the, all this stuff um, comes together uh, and how all these chord progressions really uh, play out when they're thought of in one key. Uh, so I think you'll find it fascinating too. So much interesting information in this course, which uh, why don't we take a look at that now, um, just looking at a few different sections of the book. Okay, so now let's take a look at some of the different parts of this uh, scale analysis book. First you have, um, here's an example of a chord progression uh, in C. You can see it's a fairly simple one. And uh, what you're going to do is write out the chord scales here. There's an actual other part of the book before this that explains to you exactly how you're going to go about writing all these different scales. 
But you know, once you get done with them, you can notice down here it says the answers are on page 614, which considering this is such a big book, <laughs> that's very helpful. So you can see here, uh, I printed out the page with, with the answers. Uh, what's nice is that there's uh, MP3s and MIDI files that you can play this, so you could play along with it, you could sing it. Um, there's also MP3s where you're just going to hear these chord changes, so you could play these chords, you could improvise over those chords, or you could sing these scales. So lots of different um, exercises that you could do to strengthen your ability to not only understand how to figure out the scales, but to be able to hear them. Um, so that one, that's, one, that's the main thrust of the book, is to uh, go through 36 chord progressions and do that and then apply them. Um, this is kind of an interesting part of the book where I'm taking a look at, in this example, a major scale, showing you all the alternate names that you might run into um, in this book or just in general. Uh, interesting, we have this, some of the South uh, Indian Melakarta names in here too, which I'll show you some more on that in a minute. Uh, works over all the following chords, so this within these 36 chord progressions, you will find the major scale used on these chords. Remember, that doesn't mean in every chord progression everywhere. It's just in this course, though it, you know, this is pretty, uh, uh, goes through a lot of different possible uses of major, but maybe not every possible use in uh, chord progressions anywhere on the planet. Uh, then you have a listing of, okay, if you had the C major scale, in C, obviously it would work over a major scale. It says M-E-L, that means melodically, because you do have fourth in here, which is the avoid note. Uh, but, you know, if you wanted to superimpose the C scale into the key of D, it would work over a minor chord um, or a dominant seven sus four, because it says harm, which means harmonically it would work. But there's, you know, a, a explanation of all, all this stuff, but I'm just showing you um, some of these different lists that are in the book. Then it shows you, um, here's one example of the subsets that you can get. And this is looking at all the pentatonics and hexatonic scales that you could get from the major scale. There's other lists too showing uh, dyads and, and uh, th three note, what I call trichords or triads uh, lists, which is very cool. You could go in and, you know, substitute for the major scale, any of these would work. So it's, it's just a, a, a list that I find to be very cool that's included in the book. Um, there's videos that go with the book um, explaining every chord progression, but also I've just felt that, you know, for some reason people, they may not want to watch a video. They want to just kind of read about it. And from writing and and doing the videos, there's, you know, kind of two different ways I'm looking at it. So both of them are very good. So I go through every chord progression and talk about, you know, what type of scales are going to be used and why I'm using them and alternate possibilities. So you have a lot of notes on that in the course. This is kind of cool. This looks at, okay, um, if you had a major scale, what type of chords would that be used over? So here's all the modes of major. So I go through all the different modes and look at, okay, what kind of chords are those typically used on? Which is a cool list. Then I go through it by chord. So if you had a, a dominant seventh chord, a one dominant seventh chord, here's within the course, you know, like if we wanted a one dominant ninth, you would find that on an F blues in the first measure, the third measure, the seventh measure, and the eleventh measure. So it really allows you to kind of go in and, uh, you know, look at all the different relationships and which type of chords and which type of scales were used on all the chord progressions. Here's the, another answer sheet just showing you, you know, that you can look up the answers. Remember that your, you, some of your answers may vary because you could choose different scales in, in some situations. So. Um, which is totally fine. You, you can do that, and I talk a lot about that in the course. Um, I also give you a lot of extra things that you can do. Here's a tune index, and this is showing you different tunes that you could sing through 
and uh, where the, the complete tune would be in the key of F. This is to kind of show you that many songs, when they're written, the whole melody is written in the key, in one key. So therefore, shouldn't you be thinking of all your scales in one key if the song is all in one key, rather than jumping around and thinking of different scales built on different chords? Um, so this gives you a whole list of extra credit work that you could do by singing through stuff. Um, you could also take the arpeggios of all those different chords, and this is the 96 permutations of, of a C major chord. I did this over a few different tunes where I took every one of these possibilities. I just took one a day. So it took me like 96 days to go through and just sing through a tune, uh, arpeggiating the chords using 1, 3, 5, and 7, and just here's all your different possible uh, combinations. So, very good thing to do, uh, not a whole lot of fun, but boy, do you know that chord progression after you've sang through uh, 96 permutations. I also talk a little bit about improvisation, because you could be using this course just to improve your uh, improvisation. Let's say your ears are pretty good, you're hearing most of the things in the book, but now you want to apply it, uh, but you haven't uh, improvise that much. I talk a little bit here about using the thirds and sevenths as uh, guide tones, and j this is just an example of using the tune confirmation to that, but it could be for any tune. But I recommend if you're starting off improvising um, that you use guide tones, because they work out very well just to get you into the chord changes and into hearing some simple melodies. I also go through uh, and talk about every s the uh, 28 of the modes, um, not the hybrid scales, but just the regular scales based on major, uh, melodic minor ascending, harmonic minor, uh, and harmonic major, uh, and just show you, okay, in this scale, what is the avoid note and what are the available tensions? on these different types of chords, which is a very useful list to have, especially if you don't know this information. Um, it's very concise, and it only takes a few pages to show it to you. And then finally, here's these uh, South Indian scales. But notice what I've done is I've gone through and you know, found which ones are actually scales that you already know. Um, so this is kind of cool just to see the relationships of those South Indian scales and which ones um, our scales that we use in the Western world. Um, so that's the end of the book, and uh, you know, like I said, it's 700 pages, so there's a lot of pages, but um, a lot of really cool information. Um, so that is the scale analysis book.